Hello guys, welcome to part two of our Japanese Lantern uh, game asset build. So if we flick back over to 3D Studio Max, you will see where we left off last time. We got the game low poly version of the model built uh, in part one. And what we're going to do now in part two, just make a couple of wee tweaks to this, uh, looking back on it, a couple of wee fixes. Then we are going to unwrap it and we are also going to duplicate it into a high poly version um, that we can take into ZBrush. So when I say the high poly version, what I mean is I want to add in this little section here. I want to add these little bars across the windows. And I also want to add in some tiles to the wee pitched roof. Um, it's probably easier and quicker to add them in 3D Studio Max than it is to try and add them to ZBrush, especially if you're not familiar with ZBrush. Um, so that's the two objectives for this video. What I'm going to do first of all, just looking back on this, there's a couple of wee tweaks I want to make. Uh, first of all, I want this little piece here, uh, the little bluish plate we have just underneath the lantern. I just want that to be slightly bigger because it's getting kind of lost in there. So there we go. If we just have that sticking out a wee bit, at least we can see that it's there, see it's doing something. Likewise, this little guy and this little guy or that little decorative pieces, they're kind of getting lost underneath. So I'm just going to get my scale tool here and I'm just going to scale those up in the horizontal axes. Just ever so slightly, just so that they are sticking out along with the rest of them. That's not bad. Uh, one final thing I'll do, I don't quite like how this reads um, when we see and these just connecting each other. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to get another wee cylinder. And if I just draw that out in the floor here. Uh, eight pieces is fine. I'm just going to move it again. Right click, right click down here. And place it in here just to kind of uh, hide that. Hide that little, um, what you call it, intersection between these. So I'm going to do, I'm actually going to raise this up to 16 sides just so it's a wee bit smoother there. Uh, and um, what I will do as well, because we're not going to see it, I'm going to convert this to an edible poly. Uh, one cap segment, convert to edible poly. I'm just going to delete the top and bottom face off that because we won't ever need them or see them. There we go. And uh, it's a bit high as well. So um, bring you just down a smidge, bring you up a smidge. There we go, that should be perfect. And once more move tool, just move you any position. There we go, I think that just reads a little bit better. That's not too bad. Now we could, if we wanted to, play with these and bring them in maybe a wee bit, maybe they're sticking out too much. But they're kind of similar to what's happening here. I think we'll just leave it. Uh, so that is my low poly version complete. So what I actually want to do with this, uh, you'll want to go through and rename some of these guys as well. I know that weren't renamed. I know we didn't rename them all in the video. Uh, we'll go and rename these. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to color everything uh, green. And this is going to be my low poly version. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select everything, hold shift, drag it over. And I'm going to color this all red. And this will be my high poly version. So the reason we're coloring this is we know that this is the game version. The low poly version we want to unwrap. We want to have it unwrapped ready to texture in game. The high poly version we don't need to unwrap it. We can add more detail to this, add more polys to it and take it into ZBrush but we don't actually need to unwrap it. We can just leave it as is. So uh, in this video we're going to quickly go through the unwrap of this guy and we're going to add some extra detail to this guy. So I'm going to do the high poly stuff first because I think it will be uh, more fun and because I've already shown you unwrapping on a few videos. 
So I'll just show you, say, one way example of that, and then I'll skip forward to the whole thing on wrap and see how it should look at the end. And then we'll export it out and stuff. So focusing on this guy, a couple of things you want to do. First of all, we're going to add this little band down here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, go to my edit. I'm going to go to Swift Loop. And near enough the top here, I'm going to add one, two little cuts. And then I'm going to go to poly mode. Uh, I'll de deactivate Swift Loop now. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to select all of these polys. And what I'm going to do is... There should be an option down here called Detach. Do you want to detach them? Uh, yes, yes I will. I want to hit Detach and I want to hit Detach as Clone. And what that will do is it will leave the whole pillar still uh, complete, but I'll create a copy of these. And we'll call this um, Metal Ring. Okay, so we're going to go top level and just select that metal ring now. Uh, and what I might do, just for make it a bit easier, I'm going to change the color of this one slightly. Go to purple this time. And uh, do I want to? Yes, I do. I'm just going to hide unselected, just because they're taking up the exact same space. It's kind of difficult to see what's going on there. Um, okay. So I'm not really going to explain what I'm doing here. I'm just hoping you'll follow along with me. I'm selecting all these top and bottom rings. And now I'm going to hit connect, and that will give me uh, one line connecting everything between these two. Okay. And now I want to go to my vertex mode. Let me see. I might just have to maximize this here. There is another little option I'm looking for that I can never ever find. There we are. So I want to select the bottom little piece in the middle of all of these. And I'm just copying the design of the one that was used in Final Fantasy. If you want to get more elaborate with this, you can use whatever techniques you feel comfortable with. But this is just me copying those same techniques. So there we go. Um, I'm selecting the middle one and everything, and I want to raise these up. But as you remember, these are slightly tapered, so if I just move them straight up, it will knock the, the alignment off a wee bit. So what I want to do is this little list that says Constraints. I want to click Edge Constraint, and what that means is as I move these up, it won't actually move vertically up in world space, which will bring it off a wee bit. It will actually keep it in line with these edges. So if I just bring that up like so, um, maybe about halfway. That'll do grand. That's perfect. And now, uh, let me see, what's my best way of doing this next bit? What's my easiest way? Um, I'll show you a, a Boolean. I've never done a Boolean on my tutorial before. Uh, they're kind of nice for, uh, for these things. So what we're going to do is... Now we're going to stay just in the standard primitives for now. We're going to create another e-cylinder here. And basically what a boolean is, we're using we're subtracting one object from another. So I'm going to create this little circle. And I'm going to leave it 16 sides, that's fine. And I'm going to rotate this round so it is flat, so 90 degrees. There we go. I'm just going to move it up, eyeball it. So it is intersecting my uh, little piece of cylinder here. So now we've got that. I want to line this up as best I can with where I want those little holes to be. So I'm just going to make this radius a little bit smaller. There we go. That looks nice. I'll just make sure a bit more even. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate you in 90 degrees again, create a duplicate. And it's a wee bit finicky here, but we 
can work with it. Just line up as best you can. And if we take both of these now and hold shift and rotate them again, again for some reason. Yours might not do the same, but mine really does not like that horizontal axis. Just hold shift this time go 45 degrees. And you might have to line these up. Yep, I just need to line them up a little bit. That was fine, that was fine. This one's just a little bit off. There we go. So now what I want to do is I want to take this object. I want to go to compound objects. I go boolean. And I want to subtract and just click on uh, add operands and then this guy. This guy, this guy, and this guy. And there you see we now have that, all the little holes inside. So I want to go back to my, uh, let me see, top level here. Select this guy. I'm just going to right click, convert to edible poly. And what I'm going to do is go to my modifier. And I'm going to shell this. And you can see there, um, it's giving us that thickness now. Way, way too much. Only want this to be very, very thin. A couple of millimeters. Say it like that. And that, I think, is perfect. So now if I unhide all. We still have those original cylinders there, just when I unhide all. So I delete them, and now we have our little uh, metal frame, metal piece. Very similar to what we have down here. I can close you back over. Okay, so that's that. Next, I want to add these little uh, grid lines here onto this guy. So, what I'm going to do. Um, Easiest way to do this with a few steps here. I'm going to select all four of these and I'm just going to detach these. It'll be easier just if I detach them. Uh, I don't want to detach this clone, just detach them to their own separate objects. There we go, top level. And now, if I select that, it's just those four. So, again, I'm going to right click and just hide on selected just so I can see what I'm working with. Uh, let's see, no, I'm going to go to my edge mode this time. I'm going to select all these horizontal edges and I'm going to connect and two segments as before. Apologies for it being red, it makes it kind of difficult to see these. I appreciate it. Um, but I'm going to bring that pinch down just to be the size that it is on screen. So if I deselect that, you'll see those better now. Uh, I'll just change the color of this object again, just so you can see what we're doing here. Uh, now, we'll select all the verticals. And control click, select more, select all these verticals. And same thing again, connect, and that will give us these, like so. So what we want to do now is select all of these lines, and I'm just double clicking them. A bit of a tedious process here. Just to make sure everything's selected there. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer these. Uh, just very, very thin. Maybe just under the centimeter mark, there we go. And when we chamfer, normally we would chamfer a corner and it kind of files off the corner. But if we actually chamfer a line on a flat edge, it just makes that one edge into two, as you can see here. 
And what this then allows us to do is we can select all of these edges and I'm just holding shift and that allows us to select one. I'll just do it one side. I don't want to try and select all of these because it'll be a bit, um, a bit of a handle. But if I just go now to extrude and extrude that out of the way, just about a centimeter, half a centimeter. And we'll do this by little normal. There we go. Perfect. Now we've got those. So we'll just repeat that process on all four sides. Uh, I'm just selecting one, holding shift to an adjacent polygon. That's like that. Hold shift on an adjacent, any of the adjacent polygons. There we go. Extrude. I will save the same sentence as before. Hit OK. Same thing on this side. I'm just holding shift and clicking each one there. Extrude. Come out the way. Hold shift, hold shift, shift click, shift click. Go to extrude. Oops, whoops, 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 there we go. And Bob's your uncle, that's that wee part complete. the roof. Actually, do you know what I'm just thinking? I'm just thinking this here. When it comes to texture it later on, uh, this could actually... Um, nah, do you know what? I'll, I'll have a think with that. Uh, last thing I want to do in the high poly is add these little roof tiles. So what I'm going to do just to make it easier for myself. I'm going to create a load of tiles just individually. Um, do I need a, uh, no, do you know what? I'll just start with a, a fresh new box. I just come back to standard objects, box. And I could maybe do more layers of tile. I think this one actually has five or six layers of tiles on it. This one has three. Um, I'm, 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 I know what I could do. Okay, bear with me. Go we'll make a tiny little box. It's just going to be one tiny little tile. I'm just going to eyeball this into the correct angle and position. Rotate it around a little bit. That looks about right. Uh, we will. We'll just stick with three rows for this. Uh, just to make it quicker, appreciate these videos can last a while, so if we stick with three, uh, if you want to do more detail, the same principle will apply. So length, um, yeah, that'll do width, I'll make you about that. And you could, you could go quite elaborate in your tile designs here. I'm not actually going to, I'm going to keep it quite simple. I'll just add a wee bit of a bevel to the top of these, and that'll do us. Um, how's that for size? We maybe need to make you just a little bit bigger. And I really should actually measure out size-wise on you, so if we just move you over there, even with a little tiny gap, that'll be okay. Uh, number of copies. I'll say four. So that tile is just slightly too big. So no worries. What we'll do is we will. Um, what will we do? We'll just scale you all down. Uh, no, that's not going to work. That's not what I want to do. Uh, select you all. Do you know what? I'm not going to overthink it. Uh, five tiles gives me about half a tile too much. So I need the tile to be about 10% uh, smaller. 
just doing that bit of quick maths in my head. So, okay. Length. So that's 12. What I take about 1.2 off that? It's giving me about 10.8 uh, altogether. That should be fine. And I'll just make the size of that just a little bit bigger. Just so there's a little bit of overlap for the next layer there. And what I will do is convert to editable poly. I'm just going to take this top face here. And I'm going to scale it. Um, you can see that because I've rotated it, the, the scale doesn't line up correct. But if I come up to the top here and change this to uh, local, it will make it align with the top, top face. I'm just going to scale this in just the slightest little amount. And the reason for that being that the normal uh, map generator will see these tiny wee edges here a lot easier. It's not strictly realistic to how a real tile would be, but when it comes to generating that normal map, when we have that slight little bevel there, and it's kind of reading uh, off the surface, it will read a little bit better. So that's perfect. Let me move you uh, just out the surface a wee bit more. So here we go now, if I just move you over to the edge and duplicate you again, get that nice and tight in there, uh, four more copies, there we go, so that's just ever so slightly too small, but I'll not worry, but you can see what we've done here, we've left just the tiniest wee gap in between those tiles, um, what I could do actually, just, uh, I'll just attach all of these. There we go. And that way, now if I select all the vertexes and just scale it up slightly, just the tiniest wee smidge. Again, we're just being a bit finicky with the eyeball on here. Sometimes eyeball on it's faster, sometimes eyeball on it's a little bit slower, but that will do. Um, okay, so I am going to now move this guy. Shift and move him up. I'll create a copy of that. Just rotate this ever so slightly. And you want to position it just so I've got that wee tiny lip for those overlapping. What I also want to do now, well, the way we have tiles is we always go kind of a half tile over, like so. And then copy him again up to here, up to the top. And my computer is starting to dislike me at this point. It's starting to go a little bit slower. But once more, we will rotate this just to match. That's okay there. I'll maybe just do, I'll just pull this one out a little bit more. You can see here because it's sinking in a little bit, it's kind of showing a wee bit of the red underneath. Just need to pull this out a little bit more. Just to avoid that from happening. There we go, that's better. Uh, same thing's happening here with this one. Just pull it out ever so slightly. 
And what we're going to do is we just need to trim this tile and duplicate it. So what I can do now is just uh, select that face. We're just going to hit grow a couple of times. Select that whole tile. And we'll just uh, detach this one again. Scroll down here to detach. Detach is obviously 2. That's fine. We don't need to name it. Um, top level mode just to deselect that. And we'll select this one again. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of complicated maths here. I'm just going to put a connecting edge down the middle. Just one single edge down the middle. There we go. And now I'm going to select all of these polys on the right hand side. I'm going to detach these. Uh, detach is already 03, that's fine. Again, top level. Now, if I take this, I can move it. I'm just going to move it way over to the other side here. best I can. There we go, that's fine. So all I need to do now is cap off this end piece. If I go to my edges, select view and the opposite, and choose bridge. There we go. Uh, and what I could also do is just select that edge and again just move it in ever so slightly. Just to give us that wee tiny bit of bevel. And same thing on this side, just uh, come to the top level, come to this object, go to my edge mode, select those two objects, uh, two edges again, and just bridge that. Perfect. There we go. Actually, did that select the right thing? I don't think that did. But it doesn't matter. As long as we cap that off, we're okay. So there we go. That is one side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these guys. And just move them over with Shift to create a duplicate. Rotate 180 degrees and just position that on with the rest. So you can see now what we're doing, we're making a lot more detail here with a higher poly count than we would actually want to have in game. But you can see the extra level of detail that's given us on these couple of pieces. So the last thing I was thinking of doing there. Um, when I go to texture the low poly one, I want these guys to still appear uh, behind the, the lantern. So I think maybe the easiest way to do that is if I do in fact copy this over to my base, I'll up my poly count a little bit, but um, It'll make it easier to get that luminance in the texture. So I'm going to go my low poly. I'm just going to delete these four faces. Delete, 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 delete. And just copy you. Move you over like so. All I'm going to do is now Turn on my snaps, my object snaps, and take that bottom vertex and just drag it into position. Is that correct? Not quite. There we go. So we'll color this guy green again. So we've added a little bit to our polys there, but it will make our um, make it just a little bit easier when texturing it to have these dark areas in the middle of the lantern. So I'm happy with that and I'm happy with that. Let's see if we color this all red.
that reads quite well I think we could maybe um, add a little bit more detail on the top here actually um, yeah we'll do that we'll do that very very quickly I'm just going to duplicate this little guy because we already have him here he's kind of just moving in all directions oh yes just deactivate your snaps Come on, there we go. Uh, let me see if I move him over. And what do I want to do? I want to just scale him up a bit. And we'll flatten you down. We'll just give you a wee bit of a peek. Why not? Give you in a good bit, like so. Scale it out to be the same width as one of the tiles. Let me see how's that for a bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. Give you a little bit longer. Okay. There we go. Um, let me see, can we just chamfer those edges a wee bit? Do we want to? Yes, we do we want to chamfer those edges a wee bit. Again, for the normal map. Take you, take you. Just that slight chamfer will make them read just a little bit better. Not as much as that, just the tiniest wee chamfer. Yeah, maybe, yeah, that'll do. Could probably went a bit smaller, but it'll do fine. And now we'll just go back to top level. Leave you in there. Take the bottom couple of polys. Hit F3 to see what's going on here. Bring these ones up a bit. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. And again, we'll just duplicate this a couple of times. I won't even take this outside. Maybe. Just tighten you guys up. I'll move you down to your bit closer to the surface there. Out like that, and ba -ba 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 -ba. just to cheat it a little bit, I am going to attach all these guys together and just stretch them out so they fit. I'm not going to do the chop that we done here because that'll just drag on a wee bit. How are we for time? We're up to 33 minutes already. Okay, um, yeah, let me just attach these, stretch them out a tiny little bit. Close enough as makes no difference. I'll just grab these polys. No one will ever notice that this is slightly smaller. And just pull a couple of these guys in here. Perfect. No one would ever know. So this is our high poly. Um, I'm happy enough to take that in my ZBrush now. I'm happy enough with that. What I might do when we go into ZBrush with this guy, he will uh, separate every object into a separate subtool, which will make it a little bit of a nightmare to go between them and edit every single one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some of these together just so that we have fewer subtools in ZBrush. And I'm only doing this because we're going fast and loose. You maybe wouldn't want to do this. Um, you maybe wouldn't want to do this on a real high-end piece. You wouldn't want to do this in a character and you want to keep it separate. Um, 
but for our purposes um, we'll keep the roof separate maybe as a sub tool but we will attach you back on there and we'll attach this little guy on there and what we'll do is we will We won't attach these to anything else, but we'll attach them to each other. You. And we will attach uh, that wee cylinder. Like that. Uh, we'll keep the base separate because the base has got to be stony uh, one thing we could do uh, do you want to do it now because this was meant to be part of the stone base as well if we're being really accurate to this one anyway uh, we could we could detach this bottom ring do you know what, do you know what? i'm not even worried about it we're just overcomplicating things uh, we'll keep this as a wee separate element Uh, the rest are all okay. Okay, that's good. That is our high poly, and that is our low poly. And when we go, we could chamfer these a little bit more in here, but we'll just take them in and file them down a bit in ZBrush instead. Don't we spend too much time here. That's that. The last thing we have to do then in this video is unwrap and then export these guys. So I'm not going to go through the entire unwrap in this video. As I say, you should have seen the unwrap before. I'm just going to show you one or two pieces to show you how we will unwrap. And then uh, you guys can finish off the unwrap. I'm going to pause the video uh, and then we'll come back with the whole thing unwrapped so you can compare. So we'll start off. I'll show you just a couple of pieces first of all. A couple of the simpler pieces down the bottom here. Uh, the cylinder. Let's just uh, let's just select everything to begin with. Uh, in fact, before we do that, let's just actually save our project. Always remember your 10 minute save rule. 35 minutes in. So let's select everything now. I'm going to add a unwrap UVW modifier to this. And you'll see that that will add some green seams to your model already. This is where it's wanting to cut it apart. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to hide this now. And I'm going to maximize this just to get a bit more screen space. So we've got our unwrap. And if we opened up our... If we try to, if 3D Max would ever catch up, we open up our UV editor, everything will be flat on top of each other here. So yeah, everything's laid on top. Uh, we can't really see anything. So we just need to flatten these out. Okay, I'm going to take this cylinder first of all. Go to that unwrap. Open UV editor. And what we need to do is just take these part to part. So we hit the polygon mode in the UV editor. Draw a line over everything. I'm just going to drag this out to the side. Now, it's got a nice little seam there. It's not too bad. Just one seam the whole way around. What I am going to do is I'm going to uh, trim this wee part off. So I'm going to go to my edge mode. I'm just going to double click on that to select that ring. And I'm going to hit the little explode break button. And you see that turns that white seam green. And if I select this, uh, select that element, there we go. I can now move that, separate it. Uh, what I want to do is just flatten this out and smooth it out. So I will just hit straight and selection. Uh, I could hit relax as well, but that does that, so straight and selection, that's as good as we're going to get. I'll leave it like that. This, uh, again, you've noticed I get element selected here, so when I select one poly, I'll select the whole thing. Really, really handy wee tool. Um, I could, if I wanted to, trim this off here, but I'm not too worried about it. Let's go straight and selection again. 
Might take a little second for that to work. Relax and tell flat. Relax and tell flat is a bit annoying because it can take usually about 15 seconds for this to work. And it might hit up here and not respond them. Fairly confident that it should respond in a few seconds. Fairly confident. There we go. You can see it's done that. Not a good result. That's totally fine. Sometimes that happens. If we hit straight in selection. That does not seem to be liking it. Oh, I think I know where. Let me see. Right click. Hide unselected. Um, that might be why. Okay. Hang on. The good thing is, if you do this and it goes wrong, don't worry about it. It's very easy. We can always go back and fix anything. So I just want to select that little edge there and break that. That might have been causing us problems. But now, if I go to my polygon, we'll select that top element. Uh, let me see. Can I select you? Yeah, we'd see that top has got kind of twisted and skewed a wee bit there. I should be... Those should be broke from everything. There's a, there's a green line around everyone. But if I just hit that explode again, and break and pull them out, there we go. And if I straighten those, relax until flat. These two buttons are going to be your best friends. Straighten and relax until flat. They'll do everything for you that you need. So like this guy now, straighten. And you can see, just by getting rid of that top piece, how much easier that is. Straighten, relax until flat. Um, because you've got that wee kind of kink in there it's not quite 100 percent right but straight and relax till flat that's what it should be it should be a wee thin bit an even thinner bit and then the height if we hit straight and it doesn't quite give us that so we might need to just get a wee bit uh, hands on here do we... come on Okay, wait, oh, element mode, deactivate element mode, that's why. I select all these guys. Move these in like so. That's a lot closer to the actual shape of it. That's a lot better. Uh, I'll just now rotate that around using this little rotate button. Just so it's the right way up. And now that is a couple of our pieces. Uh, this one down here is a lot bigger than it should be, obviously. So what we'll do is bring all these together. If we select all of these, I could manually eyeball that one to be the same size as that, but an easier way, just select multiple pieces and uh, rescale elements, and that'll get everything roughly the right size it should be compared to each other. So there we go, we can see that's a lot closer. Just move them in nice and tidy to each other. And that's that cylinder piece done. Um, I will show you, let me see, unhide all, what do I want to do, we'll do just this wee top roof piece maybe, again apologies for my computer starting to chug at this point, what's our video up to, 43 minutes, this is going to be a long video, come on, there we go. Uh, let me see now. Let's move everything over here. I'm going to move everything to the left this time. If you remember, we moved our little cylinder up here. Uh, I'm just going to move this to the left and work with the left this time. Um, how do I want to do this? I'm going to select all of these guys on top. I'm just going to hit that break key. Just move it over. And let's go straight in selection. And relax. You can see there. Um, it hasn't quite relaxed it correctly. This, These middle ones should be the narrowest and the widest at the side. Whereas it's done the opposite here. The middle ones are the widest. So we'll just relax until flat. Did it actually work? Yes, it actually worked this time. Because it's a simpler, just more linear shape, it relaxed it quite nicely, so that's okay. Um, let me see. What else do we want to have here? 
I could just go around with my edge mode now and just start creating some seams. Did that go all the way around? Yes, it did. Explode that. Uh, all the way around again. No, it's not taking that edge. On that edge. If we do this, we just hit break. That I believe is all of our pieces. Well, we could do this edge as well. Now it's going all the way round. Fantastic. And break. So now we've got sort of continuous lines. And what I'll do is I'll just select one of these corners and just make that our other wee break. So if we don't do that little corner break, we get sort of a, a ring of polys. But if we do do that break, it should all be able to cut in a straight line. I believe so, anyway, I could be wrong. But let me see now. So I'm going to take this bottom, this bottom surface that we have here, which you'll never really see much of. So it doesn't need very much space in the UV. But again, we'll straighten our selection there. Pull that off. And relax until flat. Same again. Give it the the obligatory 15 seconds to relax. Bizarre that it always seems to take 15 seconds, no matter what we're doing. I'm just going to rotate it just to match up with this one here. And it doesn't need to be near as big as that. We can, we can shrink that down later on to save a bit of UV space if we need it. Uh, we'll take this guy now. Unfortunately, uh, we can't we'll pull that over. Ugh, unfortunately, we're looking vertically down. We can't really see any of these. Um, Max is a bit annoying with the UV editor in that we can't just select the entire element oh, for God's sake in this window I can select my entire element from out here I cannot select my entire element so it is kind of annoying I can modify this and grow it but you can see it selects absolutely everything which is not what we want to do either so how do we get around this this is quite annoying if I straighten that selection won't even let me do that well. Ah, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. So if we use the, the grow and shrink, if we use grow and shrink within here, it'll keep it at the element. If we use grow and shrink out here, it will select the whole thing. But now I should be able to straighten this. If I click that, it'll take a few seconds. Maybe it won't. There we go, let relax. And we'll maybe do I'll just trim a couple more of these little edges here. It's not liking having so much continuous, so we'll break here. I'll maybe break on the opposite corner as well. Just give us a cleaner unwrap if we do break all of these. I was wanting to keep them all as one, but it might be easier this way. So you can see the UV is a kind of a slow process. We're using the same tools over and over again, but we it's tedious. We're kind of just doing the same thing over and over again. So we're going to pause this video after I do this. Um, if I hit straighten now, there we go, and relax until flat, give it 15 seconds, um, 
I'll pause this video after this, I'll do the rest of the unwrap, and then we'll come back at the end so that you can see how the, the final unwrap will work. Really at this point it is just repeating these steps over and over again. Why is that? Do you know what? This is really annoying. Why are you not just flat on the floor? There we go. So like that, but if I just hit straighten selection, it gives us that. Relax, straighten. Uh, good enough. There's probably a wee bit of stretch in there, but I'm not going to be super worried about it. Uh, in fact, there's definitely a little bit of stretch in there on this poly, which should be tall and thin. It's actually quite wide. Uh, nah, do you know what? I don't even care. It's fine. So we'll go through the rest of these, take them piece by piece. And again, same thing, straighten and relax, straighten and relax. So I'm going to pause this video now, uh, so you don't have to watch me keep doing this. And I will chat to you soon. Hello guys, welcome back. So I have just finished unwrapping our little low poly model here. And just to show you how it ended up, for a lot of it, um, when I repacked and repacked, it looks just kind of a bit of a mess. The only thing I've really done is the likes of the base here, um, that is one solid continuous piece. All four of those are together, just keeps them together. So you're going to be chips and cracks running along any of these corners. Uh, they'll come in quite nicely together. Likewise for the... Uh, the column here it's all nice together things like that um but nothing too complicated there so we're just going to wrap up this video just by um doing a little bit of housekeeping and exporting these two objects so what i want to do is just go to my top level right click top level select all of this uh or last little thing we always want to do um come to our hierarchy panel here and just go reset transform reset scale and that will just stop any of these things sort of twisting out of place or scaling out of place uh, when we open them in other software. And then this one is still on the zero axis. That's good. We're just going to go to File, Export, Export Selected. And if I find the file that we were actually saving here too. Three D Japanese lantern, and we'll call this uh, lantern underscore low poly, and we just save that. Uh, we have no smoothing groups really on this, uh, or I haven't changed any of the smoothing groups. So there are a couple on it. I'm not really going to worry about those. They'll be okay. Um. Just hit OK there, export that out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here out of the way. I'm going to take our high poly guy. And I'm just going to move it to the zero point as well. Now I have to kind of eyeball it a little bit. As you can see, we can't use these anymore. What we could do here actually is select everything. We could group it together, and that way it will give us uh, the coordinates down here. So there, the Y, it's just a little bit off. Just click that, and that'll just nudge it. Um, and then, if I want to, I can just ungroup that again. But it's not vitally important to do that, really. Uh, what I do want to do, again, we'll just take this. We will just uh, reset or transform and scale in the... Hierarchy tab, just give us a quick wee once over, make sure everything looks okay. Yeah, everything's grand there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, cool. And now we just want to export this one. File. Export, export selected. And we'll just get that and change this one to Lantern High Poly. Is 
And again, we don't need to change anything in here. That's all good as is. Uh, and just to reiterate what we've actually got here, we've got our low poly, which will be the one that will be in game, and it's been unwrapped. And we've got our high poly, which will not be seen in game, has not been unwrapped, but just has a little bit of extra detail. And we're going to take this high poly and take it into ZBrush again. And we'll just add a little bit of warping and a wee bit of noise and a couple of wee chips and cracks to the likes of these tiles. A wee bit of weathering and stuff to the wood and a wee bit of weathering and chips and cracks to the base. Uh, and we, yes, we did. We collapsed these just into a couple of items just so that it'll be easier and ZBrush to manage between the different items. So that's what we're going to leave this video. Uh, in part three, we will go into ZBrush. I think it actually at the end of part one, I said this would be the ZBrush point, but I realized that I don't actually have my graphics tablet to hand, so I can't do ZBrush right now. So I went ahead, done the unwrap, and the prep on the high poly version here, part two, so that in part three, we can do the ZBrush. Um, yeah, so we will leave it there. I appreciate this tutorial is taking a little bit longer. I should hope that's the majority of it done now. This was the hardest part. Getting to this point was the hardest part. Uh, so I'll see you in part three for a quick little uh, touch up on this in ZBrush and then we will wrap it up in Substance Painter. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, any comments, if you're doing this yourself, um, please let me know down below and I will see you for the next video. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.